Let's just face it. This is where we belong in Season 5, in the Hordes. There's just no reason to run the pit whatsoever. And instead, it's all about dominating the Hordes, some Hell Tides and running dick-measuring contents with the Uber bosses. And that's why I decided to make this build. A build that is solely created to obliterate the Hordes. Fuck the pit. It's all about the AOE Big Dam and maximizing ether right here. And of course, having a buttload of fun. It's the classic pen shot, big dick build, but with a twist. And that twist, my friends, is Andariel's. This combination, along with some techs I'll show soon, is just deadly when it comes to busting out AOE damage with ease and maximizing ether. I've tested about 15 or so different rogues builds this season, and I can confidently say that this is the best horde build I've played so far. It's just that damn strong. Okay, and why is that? Well, shit. For a rogue build to utilize the Andariel helmet, it needs two things. A massive lucky hit chance on your skills and a fuckton of hits. And that's what this one has, more than any other build in fact, but only in AOE scenarios. Hmm, sounds weird, Mr. Big Dick Senpai. Can you explain? Yikes, dude. Guess I'll have to. Penetrating Shot has two things going for it in itself. A high base lucky hit and the chance to penetrate. And penetration is just lovely, isn't it? Damn right. This means that the amount of enemies it hits is just massive, procking and Daryl Novas everywhere. But that's not enough, because by slapping on the trick shot aspect, we can take all of these lovely pen shots and make them split as well, allowing us to wipe the entire screen from just one pen shot. And it gets better, because I'll do what I typically do, show you two different versions. Because one of the versions is a bit more difficult to play, but it maximizes ether even more. And that's by rocking the Shroud of Kanduras. Having this and getting the correct boons, you'll not only be immortal by spamming Dark Shrouds, but you'll also pull in enemies once every second or so. And every time you do that, they just blow up with ease. Oh, and did I say the build is fun as fuck? Yeah, I think I did, but it's worth repeating. Now, just to clarify, because I'll get this question otherwise. Is this better than the Andariel builds? Well, I told you it was but only for AOE and Hordes. If you want to push the pit, you play either Puncture or Barrage. There, now you won't have to ask me a Lamao. You can also gather the bosses in the Hordes and even slap on the Umbra Cucks in there, making the build just as strong, if not stronger than both the other builds at killing them. With a bit better gear than me, you can probably blast them all down in five to 10 seconds. Okay, so that's a bit of the basics. Before we head on to the gear and aspects, let's just talk about the skills real quick. Starting us off, we have Shadow Step. This is used for mobility and unstoppable. And in this build, this is the only mobility you'll need. And why is that? Well, shit, son, because we're rocking exposure. This means that we'll constantly keep resetting our cooldowns, Shadow Step included, and have a lot of mobility. Next skill is Poison Imbuement. This is used for a ton of reasons, but some of the more important reasons are so that we can rock the Bursting Venoms aspect for additional lucky hits, and the Eldritch Bounty Legendary Node. There are, of course, more reasons, but we'll cover that later. We're also rocking two trap skills here, and why is that? Well, damn, not only do they grant us a buttload of damage bonuses, but Death Trap is mainly used to reset our cooldowns via preparation. Poison Trap, in turn, helps us reset Death Trap as we simply need to deal damage to trapped enemies for it to trigger easily. And for final support skill, Smoke Grenade. This one is extremely easy. Big damn equals good. Fuck yeah. Let's check out the gear and aspects, shall we? Starting us off, we're of course rocking the Andariels, because, well, it's pretty damn good. For masterworking Prio, it depends on your gear and current attack speed as you're looking to gain 100% on your gear. For Tiddy Protection, it's either Tyrael's Might and masterworking damage reduction for the typical Uber setup, 
or Shroud of Kanduras for the immortal pixel-pulling setup and masterwork the Dark Shroud ranks. It's then time for the gloves. There are but one pair of gloves in the game that exists, and that is the Fate Fisters. This is just too hecking good, man, as we'll get a buttload of lucky hit here. For second Prio, try to look for a decent crowd control role, as we'll use the creeping death aspect. When it comes to the pantaloonies, this is the only item apart from the Kandura's chest that will be different. For the regular Uber setup, it's the Umbrus aspect all the way baby. This is to spawn dark shrouds and makes you not fucking die El Mao. For the immortal setup, however, you will be actively pressing dark shrouds and having them on your bars, so then you'll just grab the concussive strikes aspect instead. It's in the planner, my man or woman, check it out. Either way though, second win ranks are just too fucking good man or woman, so get that. It will provide you with massive barriers. For the sneakers, the noxious ice aspect is just fucking bonkers. Other than that though, there are two extremely important stats here. Do you see them? No? Then open your goddamn eyes, because we want attacks, reduce evade cooldown, and we must get chance to freeze. Yes, that's a must. Either you need to have it on your sneakers, your pantaloonies, or both. This is to trigger the frigid finesse passive quickly, as you'll otherwise lose a lot of damage in the hordes. For staggered bosses, it doesn't matter as you always gain all crowd control bonuses, but it speeds up the regular packs of enemies a lot. And for the weapon, we're rocking creeping death aspect. This is just godly. Not only does it grant 80% big dam on bosses, but for each crowd control you have up, you gain a damage bonus in the hordes. And this synergizes well with the Fate Feisters as they allow you to gain random crowd controls. Other than that though, you grab Penetrating Shotcast twice on your weapons along with Dark Shroud damage tempers. The latter has to be at 100%. For the other aspects, the Trickshot aspect is just massive as it triggers Andarial Novas all over the place and the Retribution aspect is also godly. By knocking enemies down, we instantly gain a 30% big damn bonus. And how do we knock enemies down? Well, that's rather beautiful, as Penetrating Shot instantly knocks enemies down with enough energy. Just lovely. When it comes to the amulet, you'll want to focus on Frigid Finesse and Alchemical Advantage, but that's expensive as fuck, so having Malice, Exploit or Unstable Elixirs is also good. Either way, start tempering innovation ranks as Pen Shot is expensive in terms of resources. You'll also grab the Bursting Venoms aspect here. This can trigger lucky hits as well, and the amount of lucky hits are substantial for sure. Another important stat that you need is Lucky Hit to make enemies vulnerable. I'm currently lacking it, so I'm forced to use Exploit in the Paragons. You don't want to do that, so be a good sport and make sure that you have it on your ring, will you? And for the final ring, the Starless Skies is just goated. Don't have it? That's fine. We slap on the Starlight Aspect. This also brings me into the next topic. How the fuck do we actually solve resources? Because last time I checked, that's pretty important to actually play a build. So let's talk about it, shall we? For starters, you'll need either the Starlight Aspect or Starless Skies. Secondly, you want to temper innovation ranks. And lastly, you need to actually hit enemies. If you do all that, then you can't tell me you run out of resources. Because then, you're either trying to kill the wall or you've been smoking something. Either way, there's an additional way of gaining resources, and that's poison imbuement. Every time you use it, you gain resources. And by combining it with the bursting venoms aspect, whenever that one procs, you gain unlimited poison imbuements. And what do you get if you have permanent poison imbuement and it in turns grants you energy? Damn right, unlimited energy, lovely, and what specialization are we using, my friends? Correct. That's the preparation passive. So let's just check how it works for the shit newbies out there. Whenever you drop your death trap, 
you'll reset your cooldowns and gain damage reduction. To then reset the dead at P-traps, we're rocking exposure. Whenever an enemy is affected by your trap, you simply need to attack it for your trap cooldowns to reset. This does, however, require a lucky hit. But fortunate for us, we're stacking a buttload of lucky hit, so it's triggering all the goddamn time. This is just lovely, especially if you're running the Immortal setup, because you can keep constantly resetting the Dark Shroud cooldown, and whenever you press it, you gain immunity. Hell yeah. Oh shit, I just realized the time. It's skill tree or fucking clock. And you know it, my man or woman. We start off doing our best to avoid looking at the basic skills because Ooh. those can suck a dick. It's then time for an actual skill. Pen shot. We don't care at all about the damage it deals. Rather, we want enhanced pen shot for the additional novas and advanced to instantly knock down enemies for the retribution aspect and the malice passive. After that, we grab Sturdy as to not fucking dial Mao and pick up some lovely agility skills. Shadow Step is used for mobility and unstoppable, but we're also granted a whopping 20% damage reduction, which we can keep up with ease. Also, don't forget the passives along with unstable elixirs here, as it's a lovely damage bonus as long as you keep chugging some potions. Next up are the subterfuge skills, where we grab some lovely passives, poison trap for the additional damage, and being a trap skill, and smoke grenade for big hecking dam. Dark Shroud is also massive important, being able to grant a solid 50% damage reduction or so. In the imbuement skills, we have poison imbuement and enhanced for the lovely energy region. Grab all the passives you can find here. Alchemical Advantage and Frigid Finesse are also what you want on your amulet, as they're just fucking bonkers. But Frigid Finesse is the most goated of the two, that's for sure. In the Ultimates, we have some lovely energy region, which you'll need on your ring and amulet, along with Second Wind for a buttload of Barrier and Alchemist's Fortune. And don't forget Death Trap either, seeing as this build won't work without it LOL. And finally, the key passive. You know what we're rocking, and that is exposure for the cooldown resets. Great job, friends. Skill tree complete. Drop a sub for fuck's sake, it won't hurt. And we'll check out the Paragons right about now. In the starting board, we're rocking Control. This, along with pretty much every goddamn rogue build in the game, mainly gets its damage during crowd control, and this one is no exception. We then go to pick up Cheap Shot, along with the damage reduction nodes right here, and Socket Fluidity for Big Dam, and boosting the nearby damage reduction. After that, we want the No Witness Legendary node, as it grants us 40% Big Dam every time we press an ultimate skill, as long as we also grab up all the ultimate skill damage we can find. These nodes, along with the gems that we're rocking, gets the node to roughly 40%. We also want Tracker for Big Dam. Down here is also where you find the Eldritch Bounty node for Big Dam. But grab it last, seeing as we're not utilizing any rare nodes here. Instead, Go up to grab the Deadly Ambush node, which is bugged and still grants damage on non-crits, and Socket Bane for massive damage. And for final board, we're grabbing Exploit Weakness and picking up whatever defensives we can find along with Socketing Canny. Well damn son, Paragon's complete. What do you say we go get heckin' good now, huh? Hell yeah. When it comes to gaming, it varies depending on which version you play. This one is easy as hell though, and it's the standard edition. What you do here is basically hold down pen shot. Just make sure that you actually hit stuff or else you'll run out of energy El Mao. You want to use your poison imbuement as frequently as possible and stand in the giant pools of snot that spawns from time to time on the ground via the bursting venoms aspect, seeing as it grants you infinite imbuements. When it comes to the other skills, you're mainly spamming Poison Trap and Death Trap on cooldown in the hordes. For bossing, 
you can do it every few seconds. The remaining two skills is a judgment call. You can spam shadow step if you want and hop around like a coked up squirrel. But if you're a boomer, you may just want to chill out and use it mainly when you're crowd controlled. And when it comes to the smoke grenade, it's only used on rough elites and bosses. Okay, and what about the Immortal Shroud of Kandura's version? Well, it's just ever so slightly more difficult, but more fun and gathers more ether. Here you are, ditching either smoke grenade or poison trap, whichever you prefer, as it doesn't really matter, and instead slot dark shroud onto your bars. What you need to know here is that the cooldown of Dark Shroud starts as the immunity is ended from the Shroud of Kanduras. So right as the cooldown starts, you want to pop a Death Trap to reset it, and you have your immunity again. The other part is gathering up enemies. The skill tree is changed ever so slightly to make room for more evades, so you both reset your evade whenever you attack a dazed enemy from the skill tree and, well, just attack enemies due to the attacks reduce evade cooldown on your boots. Dazing mainly comes from the Fate Feisters, so it's a bit of RNG, but all good. You'll then run around, evading whenever there are large packs of enemies that you want to gather, and blow them up with ease. Just lovely. If you replaced your poison trap rather than smoke grenade, then you can also throw one of those bad boys onto the large packs of enemies unless you just delete them with one button. Okay, that's lovely. What's left? Bossing, of course. Funnily enough, I said earlier that this build was worse than both Puncture and Barrage on bossing, but there's one exception, and that is the Hordes, where we spend most of our time. Because if you manage to gather the three bosses together, then you can actually just blow them all up at the same time, due to the humongous amounts of synergies you get during AOE. So when this is done, this build is also the strongest for bossing LMAO. Another tip I can give here is to swap to the Umbra Cuck. And why is that? Well, by utilizing the Umbra Cucks and spawning a totem when you throw out a smoke grenade or poison trap, you get one additional target you can spawn poison novas from. But that's up to you if you want to try hard. I typically can't be bothered. Alright friends, that's all for this one. CIA Later Kings.